Friends, I'm Aaron Ciotti. Everybody calls me Ciotti. Welcome to Sunday Freestyle Free 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 Base Sunday. That's not it. Uh, Sunday. Welcome. Uh, in the chat, Apache Smoke Wounded Sniper was first. Uh, him and Quadbod have been doing timestamps for all of these live streams so like every live stream from this year now has timestamps in it and is way easier to kind of sort through and search and all kinds of good stuff so shout out to those folks uh apache smoke is first free lojo is next alec devornik after him kevin sumner titan gusto flush fpv punani License to Drive, Eva FPV, Northern Tier, CH3, Adam T, License to Drive again, Frank Nicholas, Morton Upshot, Rock Crawler, Marcel Off Axis FPV, not nah, nasty, uh, nasty FPV, Free Lojo again, Morton Upshot, Ram Donko, C Mac, uh, Anonymous. Got some repeats here. McConnell Studios is here. Free Lojo again. Jesse Garcia. Ethan W. Brandon's Baked Beans. GJ. Chopper FPV. Sweep 661. Zeft. Get, uh, Jesse Garcia. What's up, friends? Uh, welcome to the shit show. Part 549. Uh, 
I wonder how many streams there are. It's probably closer to like, it's probably in the 300s. Two years, five times a week for two years. Four, five, four times a week. Four times a week for over two years. 300 down to 200. Yeah, it's probably in the 400s. Good lord. It's a lot of bullshit coming out of this gangly man's mouth. <laughs> in the chat, if you want to talk directly to me, all I gotta do is type C out of FPV. If you do that, it'll light up an orange like this, and I'll see it, and I'll read it. Uh, if you don't type C out of FPV, I won't know you're talking to me, and I'll pretty much ignore it, usually. Unless, like, there's something... Unless, like, it catches my eye. Sometimes if you type C out of PFV, it'll still sort of catch my eye, but... Yeah. Uh, today we're going to work on the glide for real this time. Yes, yeah, he almost just fell out of there. Um, yeah, I've got three of these glides that I've been building for about the last ten years uh, in order to sell. <laughs> and uh, at some point here, I swear to God, I'm going to finish them up. Uh, today we're going to be cutting down some motor wires. Maybe soldering them up, uh, maybe cutting down some XT60 leads and capacitors. We'll see. We'll see what we do. But we're definitely going to do some stuff here today. Uh, Q&A, as always. Ask any questions you've got in the chat, anything that uh, you just want to know about FPV. I've been doing this for over six years, and I've been testing a lot of stuff for that amount of time and just kind of paying attention to a lot of the technical stuff. I'm not the most technical guy, but... Uh, I can usually kind of hold my own or at the very least get you uh, guided in the right direction. A lot of FPV is knowing how to ask the question, knowing what questions to ask, and knowing who to ask them to. Um, and yeah, I can help you out with all those things. So even if I don't have the answer, I can at least get you on the right track. That's for damn sure. Apache Smoke tagged me and said, good evening, what's up? Hello, Gangly Gang, how's everybody doing this Sunday? Rock Crawler says, hey. Uh, hold on, YouTube did the thing again. Kevin James says, hello everybody, happy, to happy Sunday! CMYK FPV's in the house, he says, yo, Freelojo says, don't forget, uh, don't forget when you stream for like a month straight. Uh, man, I would rather forget that, to be honest, that, <laughs> that was, um, that was rough. That was a rough one. Hey, uh, Travis Easterday, thank you for joining the Patreon. Very cool of you, my man. He got in on a tier uh, that's going to get him in on some giveaways, which is pretty cool. Who's going to join Patreon during this live stream? Who's it going to be? Somebody join Patreon. Three whole dollars a month will get you on there. Uh, $5 and up will get you entered into giveaways every other Monday. Um CIDFPV.com has a million ways that you can su support me. I rely on you guys to support this madness. That way I don't have to, um, you know, like rely on companies to send me stuff to then review and, and hawk to you guys and girls. Uh, so, yeah, this is a, it's like PBS around here. I rely on support from beautiful people like you. And that way, you know, you get better quality reviews. I can do the stuff that I want to do that I'm passionate about rather than just whatever the hell garbage is coming out this week. <laughs> um, and yeah, it ends up being a much better live stream. As I've been told by the folks that have been long-term um, uh, uh, donators and subscribers and and donkeys for... I mean, some of you guys have been on board for since the beginning, over two years, which is wild. Um, so yeah, that's pretty slick. Uh yeah, Patreon is the best thing that you can do to support me, and if you join the Patreon, you're going to get a shout-out here and a whole bunch of really good stuff. There's a YouTube playlist with, like, 80-some-odd unreleased live streams, sketchy flying, half-done edits, all kinds of fun stuff there. Uh, there's a Facebook group for hanging out. There's a Facebook group for selling stuff among... Um, you know, like trusted people. There's a Discord channel with a ton of stuff going on. All the beautiful people that hang out in the chat here um, are also in the Discord, so it's an awesome spot to troubleshoot and just share stuff. Um, there's some other stuff. There's some other benefits to joining Patreon that I can't remember. I mean, the Patreon channel has a whole bunch of tech articles. If you click Tech Talk up top, you'll access them. Um, but mainly, You'll just have the warm and fuzzy feeling each and every day 
that you're supporting the skinniest bastard you've ever met. So join my Patreon over at CiatiFPV.com. That's uh, as, as good as I can do, man. That's as shilly as I can be. Uh, here's what my silly little website looks like. Uh, like it says here, Patreon definitely helps me out the most. Uh, let's get that Patreon train going again. We we had um, we had a while. Xander edited his pledge. That's almost as good as a brand new person joining. Xander, thank you for doing that. You are now going to get in on some giveaways, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, we had a good little Patreon train going for a while. There was like one new patron every live stream for like two weeks. How about we start that again right now? Who's it going to be? Who's going to support the gangliest gangle donkey of all the gangle donkeys in all the world? Uh, over here on Etsy, I've got some really fun stickers and hardware that you can buy to support me. Uh, over on Fiverr, you can work with me one-on-one. -on -one. We can get you flying better, building better, tuning better. Um, message me anywhere. All my contact info is up here. Message me anywhere with more info on how to do that. Basically, look, take advantage of the fact that I've wasted thousands of dollars and hundreds of hours of my time over the last six years, and don't do that. Like, spend a little bit of money to save yourself time and more money than you would spend um, by working together with me, and I'll answer a ton of your questions, take you down a path where you can build better, fly better, tune better, and yeah. Don't beat your head. You don't need to beat your head into FPV as bad as we used to have to. Um, but you need a trusted person to help you through it. If you're relying on strangers on Facebook, you're going to have a bad time. Most people on Facebook have no idea what they're doing. And yeah, they're just going to give you bad advice. Everybody wants to help, right? And like, it's great. Like, I love that, that human beings want to help each other. But is it... Chris Rock's new um, Netflix special, he talks about how we are no longer, like, addicted to crack cocaine or, like, we are, but we're, we're not, our biggest addiction is not opiates. Our biggest addiction is attention. That's all we want is attention. And if you help someone, you're going to get attention. But what these new people don't realize, or just not necessarily new people, just people that don't know what the hell they're talking about, is that, like, they don't know what they're talking about, right? Like, look up Dunning-Kruger. If, if you, like, as soon as you get into something, you think, after a week, you think you know everything. But in reality, you only know a week's worth. And then, like, you think you know, you, you think you know more and more and more and more, but then, like, once you've put in six months or a year or two years, it goes like this, and you realize how little you actually know. Uh, most of the advice that you're going to get on Facebook is from people that think they know everything, but in reality, they don't know anything. So be really careful with that, because you can waste money, and frankly, with like five-inch rigs, it can kind of be unsafe. Like, you can get all chopped up by somebody giving you terrible, terrible, terrible advice on Facebook. Um, so careful careful with that. Look for people that have been in the game for a long, 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 long time, because they're the only ones that actually have a full picture of what the hell's going on. Um, so yeah. And I like to think of myself as, as one of those people. Uh, I've, I've worked really, I'll put it this way. I've worked really hard to be one of those people. All right. So yeah. Uh, uh, hey, I am on uh, live stream live over on Discord. If you wanna, if you need to drop a picture or something like that to show me something. Um, so yeah, somebody join the Patreon and you're gonna love your life a lot more. I promise. Uh, Teespring for some fun shirts and apparel. Uh, CMYK and I are going to be updating the Teespring with some new designs very very soon. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, if you want to do a pay, uh, super chat to support me, but you don't want YouTube and Google to take 30%, this is the button for you. It's the PayPal button. I'll get an email. You tag me in the chat and say, yo, Siati, check your PayPal, and I'll go read the note over there in the same way that you would be doing a super chat. Um, many, 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 many content creators like myself, content creators like myself, rely on these really simple to use affiliate links. When you're doing an order on the internet, there's probably a content creator somewhere with an affiliate link to that website. All you got to do is find it and click it before you check out, and they will get one to six percent of your order total for free. It's the best. Uh, it's one of the best ways you can support 
um, people that are making stuff for you to watch for free. I have affiliate links to Weebly, Newbie Drone, FPV Cycle, Amazon, Get FPV, Oh My God, HD Zero, Flywoo, Emacs, Banggood, Camera Butter, and AliExpress. What some brilliant people do is they will take these links, copy link address, and they will replace their bookmarks, if they use bookmarks, with my affiliate links. So that every single time they go to Amagod's oh website by clicking their bookmark, they're actually clicking my uh, affiliate link. Every time you check out from a website, it wipes that affiliate link out. So you kind of have to click these affiliate links over and over and over again. What some other folks like myself have done, like I don't use bookmarks. I just, if I want to go to Amazon, I just type AMA for Amazon. And then it, it auto suggests like the most frequent thing that I've been to on Amazon, which for me is my affiliate link. But if you type AMA in and it just tries to go to am regular old amazon.com, what you can do over here on the right is you can click the little X and that'll get rid of that most visited Amazon link. And then you can just come in here and you can just click my affiliate link a bunch of times. And then you'll kind of be tricking your browser into thinking that my affiliate link is the link that you want to go to every time you hit AMA. Um, and you can do that with all of these, you know, GE for Get FPV, UM for Oh My God, HD for HD Zero, FL for Flywheel, right? You can do that. You just have to do it one time. And then from then on, when you type FL for to go to Flywheel, it'll suggest my affiliate link and you'll hit that. And what's nice is you hit, you click my affiliate link and then the browser's like, oh yeah, he definitely wants to go there, right? And then like every time you hit those first couple of letters and click the link, you train your browser more and more that yes, I wanna keep going to the, I mean, your browser doesn't know this affiliate link, but you know what I'm saying. You guys are smarter than I am when it comes to computers. And then there's a whole bunch of other stuff down here that's just kind of fun. Uh, FPV Therapy is a Facebook group for those of you that, along with me, struggle through mental illness each and every day. Um, so PTSD, past trauma, depression, anxiety, whatever it may be. There's a whole group of us over there. Not a super active forum because it's hard to talk about that shit, but um, a ton of us have posted a lot of really good info in there. Even if you don't struggle yourself, there are people in your life that are struggling, and if you want to understand them a little bit better, which would mean a lot to them, um, this is a great way to do it. It's not a, a Facebook group for posting uh, flight edits. They will be deleted. It's for talking about mental illness stuff. It's it's serious and it's real life. And so yeah, it's not a happy-go-lucky playtime <laughs> Facebook group. It's talking about serious shit. It's talking about scary, nasty stuff. Um, but hey, man, that's life. Sometimes come along for the ride or else. I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. Uh, contact info, there's some BattleBots info, there's some fun stuff. You'll dig it. Uh, all right, friends, let me get caught back up on chat. Freelo just says, I liked Bot's review of the new, uh, of the Emacs new O3 Cinewoop. I didn't watch Bot's review, I watched, um, uh, I watched Kebab's review, which was pretty good. Zeft said, where's the link to sign up? I assume that you're talking about Patreon Zeft. It's over on CIDFPV.com. Or you can just go to Patreon and just search for CIDFPV. I'm the only one on there. I'm the only CIDFPV on there. I'm not the only one on there. Kevin James with a $5 super chat. Thank you so much, brother. He says, what's the most fun activity you did with your family this week? Um, last night, actually, um, Azalea, our 11-year-old, uh, had... Is Azalea 12 now? Azalea's 11 or 12. I should know that. Um, they had a uh, really cool friend over, and they were hanging out. And um, we, uh, Maggie and I went to Aldi Friday, I think, and they had a couple really cool, not super expensive, but like sort of fancy cheeses. Um, and I had the brilliant idea. We had some wine in the refrigerator, and then um, I had the brilliant idea to do like a little cheese board with the kiddos. Um, Sage is, is out all weekend, um, and we just couldn't wait. Uh, and we didn't think he'd be interested anyway. Um, so, yeah, we uh, uh, cut all these cheeses up. Maggie actually got a uh, sparkling cider so that the kids could feel like they're drinking along with us. Um, and, yeah, we sat around and talked and hung out with uh, Azalea's new friend and uh, had some 
delicious cheeses and wine and yeah it was just really nice really chill afternoon yesterday i i did no fpv stuff whatsoever yesterday yesterday was just a complete day off for me um which i i need to do sometimes just to maintain my sanity um so yeah that was really nice it was it was really nice to just not do anything job related yesterday um and yeah, always good to spend time with my favorite people in the whole wide world. Uh, where are we at here? Rob Axison says, made by first and last hot station repair on a broken component attempt. <laughs> Was it that bad? I've heard that you really need like some sort of a microscope set up so that you can see what the hell you're doing. Um, Rob Axison says, I'll spend the money from now on. <laughs> Uh, Nuno512 says Gemfan1209 and 1208 uh, now on AliExpress. Not just on AliExpress, but on Weebleed FPV, actually. Uh, this is one of the things that I wanted to talk about here today. Um, Zotek from Weebleed FPV uh, sent me a message and said, Yo, what do you think of the new uh, the new Gemfans that, that I know you've had for a while? So I, I gave him some feedback. Uh, and yeah, they are up on Weebleed FPV. These are the 1.2 inch prototypes that I've been trying very hard to not show you guys and really not doing the best job of. But I did okay um, for the last like couple of months. Um, I've given uh, Gemfan a ton of feedback on them. They're a really good propeller. They're kind of aimed at competing with the new um, the new HQ uh, prototypes. These are a little bit heavier, the, just the tiniest little bit heavier than the HQ prototypes. Um, the inner dimension of the of the mounting hole is correct, and it is straight through. Like you can see here, there is a hole coming out the top of the propeller, so you do not have to drill these out with one of the 0.99 millimeter drill bits that you can buy from me, uh, which is a huge bonus. Like as, as much as I'd love to sell you a little 0.99 drill bit it's kind of annoying um so yeah that's a big deal uh the the hole that they've put for mounting is not too small it's also not too big so that they go right under your motor shafts and they actually come off of your motor shafts uh take note newbie drone <laughs> newbie drones as he props the the hole is like my guess would be that the inner hole on their props is like 0.96 millimeters which is too tight and and you can very easily ruin motor shafts when you're trying to pull that propeller off or in some cases not be able to get the propeller off um so yeah they're really good in that respect in terms of flight performance i just don't like three and four blade props on on the tiny whoop i want for i i want a more freestyle kind of flight experience and that's by blades i also prefer the lightest weight possible motor um, at a super high KV, which is an 0702 at like 30 or 32,000 KV. And that's not a good match for three or four blade props. So these are not for me. These are propellers for racers. And if you're a racer, I think you're gonna love them. They're really good. They're not as fragile as the HQ props. Um, like I said, you don't have to drill them out like the HQ props. Um, the, 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 the number one problem with the HQs is that the top of the propeller is full blown closed. So you literally have to drill them out. Otherwise you will not be able to put them all the way down on the motor shaft and they will bend your motor shaft a lot earlier than you want. If your prop is sitting up really high on the motor shaft, it's a longer lever and it is going to bend and ruin that motor. Um, you really, one of the biggest things to get durability out of, um, tiny whoop motors is to push the propeller all the way down as low as it'll go. Um, and then it's a much shorter lever and your motors are actually going to last without constantly bending, braking. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's a very simple thing that unbelievably HQ has just not cared about. I don't know. How do you not know that? Like, how do, how do you, how, how? Every single other whoop propeller is opened on top. I don't understand how or why they've missed the boat on this one, but it's super annoying. Um, so if you don't want to go through all the pain in the ass, um, these are a really good propeller. And like I said, they're more durable than the HQ Protos, so that's kind of a big deal. It's sort of annoying. 
Um, although, admittedly, not the end of the world to have to swap out tiny whoop props. Uh, so yeah, the new gem fans are great. You can get them from Weed Lead FPV. It looks like they got rid of the uh, the milky color that I had in the prototypes. I don't even know where they are anymore. I've flown them so much that like I'm kind of done with them. Um, and but yeah, they're really good. 1208 and 1209. The uh, the quad blades I think are 1208. And the tri blades, I believe. Nope, 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 nope. The quad blades are 1209, and then the tri blades are 1208. Uh, for most motors, you're gonna want the the tri blades. I mean, to be honest, just get them both and just try them out. The tiny whoop propellers are so cheap that like there's kind of no reason to just not buy every single one of them and try them for yourself. Um, looks like there's a 3D printed frame. I've not seen that video yeah that's interesting over on discord and live stream live adam t hopped onto the patreon congratulations adam t you are today's patron of the day uh if somebody else wants to join i'll call you the patron of the day as well but for right now adam t is the patron of the day thank you brother and he joined a tier where he's going to be entered in some giveaways so hopefully he'll win some stuff uh and apparently there's a game-changing cinematic fpv drone Damnedest thing, if it, it almost feels like every single thing that comes out in FPV is a game changer. It's weird. I don't know. How could that be? It's almost like they're all full of shit. Maybe it's actually a game changer. I don't know. But I doubt it. I doubt it. Uh, like, share share to feed finally they're available these are the protos I've been buying for months hey there we go oh available over on Veybleed FPV. Uh, all right, people. So hey, let's uh, let's do some work on these glides. What do you say? Uh, somebody give what what's uh, so Freelojo says he liked Bot's review of the new Emacs 03 Cinewoop. Somebody give me the Cliff Notes version of Bot's review. Is it like a proper review or is he just like fucked up on Salvia the whole time? Rob Axelson says, Rob Axelson says, hola, I made my, oh no, we got that. Uh, Eve FPV says, love that. I wonder what I was talking about at 326. Uh, Chase says, I've never been as happy uh, till I got the Moon Travelers. I got myself an ultimate time, tiny whoop now and I'm in love. Awesome. Love to hear that. Smash it, man. Smash it into all the things. It'll magically survive. Uh, these ultimate freestyle tiny whoops that I've been building and specking out of are just stupid. It's just stupid how hard you can beat them. Uh, Fick says, sorry to repeat question. Don't know if you'd see my other one because my finger's stuck and spelled your name wrong. Yeah, I didn't see it. Uh, how much for an hour of your time? I don't see it on Fiverr. Um, so it kind of depends on what we're working on. Uh, just message me. It's so, here, let me show Fiverr. Uh, oh, wait, it, will it not, hold on, if, if I click it, oh, I guess it, oh, no, hey, there it goes. Um, so, yeah, the, the starting at numbers are, I meant to, I, I, I wanted to do more of this, so I dropped the price, but the starting at numbers all cover uh, a half an hour, um, so it's basically 40 bucks for a half an hour, and then it's 60 bucks for an hour, um, and then it's a uh, 100 for two hours, Two hours is an awful lot. Uh, one hour is about the sweet spot. If you just have a few things that you want to go through at half an hour, I'll totally do it. Um, but I've been actually meaning to, to change this and just level this all up. I just I want it all to be the same. Look at that. I did it. Uh, there we go. All is right with the world. Yeah, so that's how Fiverr works. And to be honest, I, I would actually prefer you guys not go through Fiverr. Like, read the stuff on Fiverr, because it's really good info, and then just message me on Instagram or Facebook or email me or whatever, 
the the messenger on Fiverr kind of sucks, so it, it it's hard to talk it back and forth and schedule the session out. Um, and also, they take a percentage. If you want to be protected by Fiverr, um, then by all means, go through there. That's great. Um, but you know, I'm here four times a week. If I rip you off, you can just come to the chat and tell everyone about it, and then you'll ruin me. So I won't do that because you know I'm also just not a dick, so I won't do that regardless. But uh, yeah, it's all good. Uh, Marcel Alvaxis says probably fucked up himself. <laughs> Freelo just says, uh, it's kind of just bot trashing on DJI. <laughs> CMYK says, uh, you must have inspired lots of tiny lifter builds. 1102 sold out on newbie drone. Oh my god. Did you tell me you got a set before they sold out, CMYK? Please tell me you got a set before they sold out. Um All right. I'm caught up on chat. Let me move the uh let me move that window over to the right here. Uh, Fix says right on. Thanks, bud. I trust you. So, um, uh, so we'll do a PayPal sometime soon, most likely. Um, contact me first, Fick. Let, let's let's talk about like what you're trying to accomplish, and then I'll tell you like how long I think that's gonna take, and then we'll get it scheduled. And I usually just like do the session, and then after the session, like whenever you get a chance, just shoot me that PayPal, and it's all good. I'm pretty fast and loose with it. Six six one says bots review is I hate DJI. <laughs> that's uh. That's sounds like bot, <laughs> uh, and I'm not saying that in a bad way. Uh, there's plenty to hate about DJI, and I do not, uh, I do not blame him for hating them, even a little bit. All right, let's do some, uh, let's do some glide work, friends. Quality of this bench cam will clean up in but a second. Come on, Logitech G Hub, you gigantic piece of garbage. Not working? All right, let's quit it and relaunch it. Maybe it'll work this time. Come on, Logitech G-Hub, you gigantic piece of garbage. Oh, look at that. All I had to do was relaunch it. God only knows why. <laughs> Logitech, seriously, get your shit together. Uh, so I've done a little bit of work on this off camera here. Basically what I did is I mounted, and this is how I recommend you guys do it. Yes, it takes a little bit extra time, but you get a better result. Um, bolt your motor down, screw your motor down, put a little tiny piece of VHB on your race wire, stick that down in the exact right position that it's going to be, and then run your, your, motor, uh, your uh, ESC leads here with a little bit of extra slack. Never just run these guys directly to the ESC pads because then if you break an arm, it's gonna rip something off. It's gonna rip, hopefully it's just gonna rip the pads off of the, the race wire LED, which is one of the reasons I love the race wire LEDs. Worst case scenario, it's gonna rip the pads off of the ESC itself. But you've got two, for each wire, you've got two pads here That'll, that'll hopefully rip off, and only one pad here. So you've got like a 66% chance that the pads being ripped off will be on the, the race wire or the LED race wire, um, rather than your nowadays 100 plus dollar ESC. Um, so stick this guy down, and then take your little wires here and set up some extra slack. Push the wires up, in this case, like push them up in this direction, and then turn them over. So that, again, you've got a little bit of extra uh, here. And you can also, in some cases, there'll be like a press nut here. You can kind of push them to the side of the press nut so that they, the, the press nut is the highest point. And then just measure them out and cut them. And then what you can do is take that motor off. So I did it just in, I mean, this frame is identical front and back. So I didn't really have to do this, but sometimes frames we'll have the ESC a little bit farther forward, a little bit farther back. So the, the best way to do this is to do it front and rear. Do one front and do one rear. And then you've got two motors with the, the motor wires cut in the exact right length. And now you can take all of your other motors and just match them up. And that's what we're going to be doing here. So um, I've got, so there's three rigs that I'm building here. So we're going to batch this out. And now you've got one that's set up for the right and one that's set up for the left. You see that? Like the wire runs are a little bit different. Um, so grab a bunch of your motors and split them up right versus left to make sure that you don't end up with like a weird number 
of one side versus the other. Not many people are going to be building two rigs at the same time, but uh, let alone three rigs at the same time, but hey, if you are, uh, here's a way that you can batch some of that work. Batch! Listen here, batch. That's terrible. I apologize. All right, so I've got a piece of VHB on this little race wire here, so that's going to make my life easier because I can just kind of hold it up. And now just straighten these guys out and make sure that you run, like you cut the left wire for the left wire and the middle wire for the middle wire. Otherwise, it's going to look ugly. It's not the end of the world if you fuck that up, but it's just going to look a little bit uglier. So these are the... Um, Right now in my hand is the, uh, the one that I'm cutting, I should say, is a purple race wire. Uh, two of these rigs are going to have red race wires, um, and then one of them is going to have purple race wires, because one of the rigs is going to have a bunch of purple TP, uh, uh, green TPU on it, and green looks cool with purple. Um, all jokered out and shit. And then um, the other two rigs are all about the red so they're gonna have a bunch of red leds and yeah you just kind of line them up like this and chop them down and there we go i've got one of the purple ones done and that one was for the right side so i'm going to do the next right side one here uh all right Bean says bot did a great job he always does, man. He, he's he's actually a really good reviewer. Like, you certainly wouldn't think it looking at him, but man, Bot is my best, best, most favorite example of not judging a book by its cover. Um, like when when I when I described that the the one of the kids I, I think Azalea hadn't heard that saying before, um, and Bot was actually the one that I used to to describe that. Like I I pulled up a picture of him and everything. Um, yeah, it's just, he's just a great dude, man. If you've never, if, if you don't think Bot is awesome, you've very obviously never met him in person. Um, everybody that's met him in person is just like, wow, I am never going to judge a book by its cover again. Um, and that's just great. Like, that's such a good life lesson. You know what I mean? Uh, so there we go. There's two of the purple motors chopped down and that's, that's the one, well, let's, Let's do the one side on, on all of these. I've, I've now got uh, a bunch of the motors with red uh, LED race wires. And I'm going to save these little bits of extra motor wire and put them in uh, each of these quads so that uh, the folks that buy these things on the live auctions that I'm going to be doing with them uh, can have a little bit of extra wire. God forbid they ever mangle one of their... Um, one of the motor wires going from the race wire LED to the ESC. And Gamagonad says, sure wish I could get some appropriate size LED race wires these days. Uh, all they have in stock everywhere is 25 millimeters to 35 millimeters, if they even have that. Where have you been getting yours lately? Uh, Gamagonad, what, what size are you looking for? 20, 25 is what these are. 25 tends to be the right size for 5-inch rigs. Um, for micros, really, like, the only ones are the Flywoos. Uh, and they are 15 millimeters long. And last I checked, they were in stock on Flywoos website. They did not have all of the colors, which is kind of annoying. I ended up I bought a whole bunch of them. Um, I actually bought a bunch to sell, so if, if they don't have them in stock, I do, and I will certainly sell you some. Um, all I was really able to get was pink and green, which, again, kind of annoying, but not the end of the world. Green's kind of cool, uh, and, and pink is cool too. Pink is almost purple. A lot of people like purple. Um, so, yeah, if Flywood does not have them, I gotcha. But last I checked, they did have them. These are my current favorites. Uh, these are CL Racing race wires. Uh, I believe that Pyrodrone sells these. My favorite two things about these CL Racing 
uh, race wire LEDs are that they have staggered pads. So the middle pad is staggered, which just makes it a little bit easier um, to not have the uh, to not have the um, to not get solder bridges between the pads. And then the other really cool thing is they put these tiny little pads on the side of these things. I'm going to show you in a second here because it's going to be really hard to describe that. And what these little tiny pads on the side allow you to do is put a second one of these on the bottom of the arm. Um, having a, the, the race wire on the top of the arm is cool for when it's on the ground. Um, but as soon as you take off, all you can really see is the bottom of the quad because it's always kind of flying away from you. Um, so what these guys allow you to do, and now these are the pyro drone versions. Uh, but they're made by CL Racing, and they're completely identical. Um, so yeah, you can see there, they've got these little side pads that admittedly are very small, and it's it's a, it's a kind of a challenging solder job there. Please focus, little guy, please. Uh, but you'll, you'll get it. And then you can just run your little wires around to the bottom, and then you can put a second one on the bottom. Isn't that slick? And then you just have these three little tiny wires which is like no big deal. So now when you're flying away from yourself, the LEDs will be blinding you in the face as well they should. Uh, or if somebody's trying to chase you, there'll be two big ass bright LED race wires for them to be able to see. I can't tell you guys um, how much easier it is to chase someone that has a proper LED on their rig. Um, the race wires totally do work, like they're great and all, but Having them on the bottom like this is like next level. And you know, if, if you're gonna fly with other people, one of the really fun things is to chase each other, chase each other around, um, especially if you're a, a broke ass analog weeb like me. Um, it really, really, really helps slash your only hope in actually chasing them around is gonna be if they have big bright LEDs on the bottom of their shit. Um, so yeah, that's a really cool little bonus on these CL racings that I'm, I'm a big fan of. Uh, admittedly, pretty much all of the race wire LEDs are kind of the same thing. There's really not, you know, it's, it's a, it's a PCB with a couple of LEDs on it. They're, they're fairly, um, straightforward. So yeah, pretty much any of them are going to work just as good as, as, as another, but the CL racing, um, at the moment is sort of my favorite. Uh, and did you guys, do you guys need to show me the, do I need to show you the staggered pads? Do you know what I mean when I say that? Just the, the three pads on them are not right next to each other. Um, they're staggered and the middle one is farther forward. You can probably see it even on this camera. See how they're staggered? The middle one is farther forward. It just makes it a little bit easier to solder up. That's all like no big deal. But yeah, little quality of life kind of thing there. Uh, okay, so I've got all of the left side motors done. One, two, three, four, five, six. Awesome. These guys are all good to go here. They're all for the one side, and one of these has um, VHB on it. So I'm going to keep this one out, and then I'm just going to grab another one of these, and then these other four can sit down here on the ground. Two purples. Uh, the purples go with the green rig, eh, green TPU rig over there, and then the red ones go with the uh, red and purple rig. This this guy here, this build is going to be the um, it's going to be the Rossinante two. I own the main Rossinante, but this is the Rossinante two, uh, which is going to have a blue LED in the back as well as the blue TPU because the engines on the ships in the show, the Amazon Prime show, The Expanse, uh, have blue, uh, they have blue, oh, what are the name of the engines in there? It's that guy's name. Uh, something, Epstein Drive. Yeah, all the ships in that show have blue Epstein Drive engines. If you didn't think I was a geek, now you know. Although, The Expanse is just too good of a show to be like, oh, you're going to be a geek. To, like, 
if somebody's into the expanse i'm not gonna be like oh you're a fucking geek man star trek mm, yeah maybe although there's so much nostalgia in star trek you really don't need to be a geek star wars nah the whole like people that are into star wars or geeks thing is i think long gone um so yeah uh all right let's do the uh the ones for the other side here off axis dropping the cidfpv.com link thank you brother hey i was on uh speaking of off axis i was on his uh thursday night live stream you guys should check it out uh do me a favor marcel drop a link to your uh, your stream that i was on we had a blast uh, Gamma Gonad says, I like the 15, am I bad? I've, uh, I've also used the 25, uh, wish there was a 20 millimeter though, right in the middle. Uh, that's what these are, I believe. I believe that these are 20s. I could totally be wrong though. Oh no, look at that, these are 25s. Yeah, I guess there isn't a 20. I'll be damned. Um, but yeah, so the, the these 25s, in my opinion, are perfect for... Um, for five inch rigs, you've got, you've got enough room where like, you don't have to cut your motor wires stupidly short. And then you put this sort of, you don't want to put it super close to this joint here between the base plate and the arm. Um, but you want to put it out here kind of as far as you can, because this is where the prop strikes are going to happen. So you get this thing pushed out here pretty far. Um, and then you're kind of good to go. Uh, like I said, if you guys need any of the any of the uh, Flywoo 9x15s, um, I have a whole bunch. I have a ton of them in pink, um, and then I have a couple in green, and yeah, they're 9 millimeters wide by 15 millimeters long. These are really the only race wire LEDs that you're going to be able to run on any kind of a micro. Um, Cinewoops micros three inch four inch even maybe down to like two inch uh those are gonna be the ones for you and that's it like those fl the reason why i got so many is because nobody else makes a um uh, an, an arm led like that that will work on um the the tiny the the shorter arms there are some out there, but they are only like 1 or 2S or 1 to 3S, and that's just silly. You know, there there might be a point, even if you're building a rig that's destined for 3S, there might be a point where you want to go to 4S, and if you have to take the arm LEDs off, you're going to be pissed. So, yeah, the, uh, the Flywoos are definitely the way to go for micros, and if you need to buy some, let me know, and... I will force you to buy a sticker from me, but I, along with the sticker, I'll throw in some race wire LEDs. Speaking of stickers, I didn't do my sticker shill, but uh, I do have some really fun ones available. There are some Gangly Gang stickers available, as well as 099 millimeter drill bits. Uh, for 10 bucks, you're going to get any one of my stickers, uh, as well as a 099 mil drill bit, so that you can fix your tiny whoop props so that they actually come off easily. Um, and don't ruin things in the process of taking them off. Uh, oh, why is this sitting over here? Oh, no, this is one of the purple ones, so I'm going to throw this back here. Uh, and then uh, there's even a sticker pack available if you want a bunch, uh, if you really want to support me, or you just want a bunch of my stickers. Um, it's 15 bucks for a drill bit and a sticker pack. That's either going to get you three individual stickers or um, a little sheet with five stickers on it. Uh, so yeah, there's some cool stuff available. That's another way that you guys can support me. And if you're addicted to shopping, get yourself something nice. Buy yourself something, yo. You deserve it. You know it feels good to buy shit. That's not specific to ladies. That's all of us, man. Retail therapy is a real thing. You deserve it. You work hard. Buy yourself something nice. All right, we are getting there here. Just kind of chopping some of these guys down. I should probably do this with my hands a little farther forward so you guys can see what I'm doing. Although, I mean, I'm just chopping wires. There's really nothing magical happening right now. The magic happens after hours. Uh, know what I mean? <laughs> Morton Upshot says, uh, what is the advantage of soldering the race wire first and ESC second? I finish on the race wire. 
Um, I don't know. I do it different every time, I think. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't really know if there's, like, a right way to do it, per se. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if there's a, there's an advantage to doing it one way or the other. Uh, I just happen to do it this way. Th this, th what I'm doing here is a little bit different because I'm trying to batch stuff out, so I, I might have... Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I literally have no idea why... Th th I have a feeling that there was some thought process put into it, doing it this way, but I, I really, if you're just doing one build, I really don't think it matters. Um, just, uh, you know, as long as you're, as long as you're not hurrying through it and making silly mistakes, it's kind of all the same. I, I don't think you're going to save a significant amount of time doing things in one order or another. What I will say is I, I do like to build... I used to build rigs kind of like from the bottom up. Like first I would build the frame with the arms on it. And then I would put the ESC in it. And then I would solder the motors up to the ESC. Um, and then I would do all the flight controller stuff. And when you do that, what I've realized is you end up with like a big gangly rig that's just kind of a pain in the ass on your bench. Um, currently, I prefer to build middle out basically to steal a line from uh from silicone valley um yeah i like to build middle out which is what i did on these rigs which is flight controller vtx receiver antenna camera do all that shit first and then what's nice is you can run those wires easily under your esc and then you drop the esc down and you do the work on the ESC, and then the last thing you do is plug the flight controller into the ESC. The problem with doing it that way, I guess, is that you kind of have to wait until the last second to check if the VTX works and to check if everything's wired up. But I mean, if you're if you're taking your time and like paying attention when you're doing the build, like everything is going to be wired up properly. Um, so, yeah. But everybody has. A little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a different way of doing things, and that's okay. Like I said, I don't really think that there is a um, a huge amount of time to be saved building these things one way or another. Somebody's asking to see the uh, the Coca Cola capacitor. That sticker is that sticker is actually long gone, unfortunately. Uh, that sticker used to be available on, um, on race day quads. I don't know if they, they still have it. My guess is they do. Uh, but what I can show you is a Pabst Blue Ribbon sticker on a capacitor. Hold on, let me just clean it off right now. It's so filthy that you can't even tell what the hell it is. Um, but yeah, uh, race day quads for a long time has sold these little tiny stickers that are sized perfectly uh, to go on the outside of a 1,000 UF capacitor. And I guess you could probably cut them down a little bit to put them on a smaller capacitor. Um, hold on. Let me just scrub this out a little bit. I'm just putting some uh, rubbing alcohol on a toothpaste, on a toothbrush, and just scrubbing this thing down a little bit here because it's filthy. Come on, you little bastard, get clean. Um, so yeah, on a glide frame here, my preferred spot, and, and this is what I'm going to be doing on these um, live auction builds as well. Um, there's a beautiful spot right on the driver side, I'll say, as someone that drives on the left side of the car, <laughs> uh, of the rig for a little capacitor and... Yeah, you put your little sticker on it, and then it sits right on in there. See it in there? Right there. That's my little, that's my fun little Pabst Blue Ribbon capacitor up in there. There it is. Now you can really see it. And yeah, I've got a little uh, Tiny's cap on there so that you're not dealing with the stupid little uh, pegs that come off the capacitor. That makes it nice and strong. And then you just run a couple of wires uh, that go right to the center, right below the carbon fiber here in front of those green red wires uh, to the pads 
uh, on top of the uh, on top of the battery lead. It's kind of hard to see it in there, but um, we're we're going to be doing that here on this rig. We're going to be putting the uh, the XT60 leads down, and then come on, you little jerk. Hold on, what if I run them up through here? So yeah, we're going to be putting the and they're not going to be run through the back like that, but XT60 leads are going to be there. And then we're going to solder down the capacitor with the little waffle cap on it like this. And then you just put it right there. The, these leads will not be in the way here. Um, but yeah, they sit up on top and then these leads kind of just sneak around and they, this is cut a little bit too long right now, but it's going to sit right there, uh, zip tied down in that position right there. Uh, these smaller capacitors, unfortunately, there are no stickers that fit perfectly. Like I said, you could cut those stickers down, but um, yeah. Or you can just run a thousand UF uh, lead, which there's really no reason for. Um, these uh, these ESCs come with these 470s, and there's like it's this has been proven time and time again through actual testing that the 1000 UF leads are complete and utter overkill and these 470s are more than enough. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm mainly using these 470s lately. I used to have the thousands on all my rigs. Uh, right now, this is the only rig that I've got uh, with a thousand on it. At some point, this 1000 UF lead will explode and I'll swap it out for a 470. Although they, are, they don't typically explode, they'll usually like somehow get mangled in a crash or like even with the waffle cap on them um if you hit them just right you can still break the little legs off of the um off of the capacitor in between it and the waffle cap um it's very rare and you have to hit it a million times to do that but that can happen uh, all right what else is happening in chat here? Adam T says, Weebleed only has PH 300 mAh batteries. How hard would, how hard would it be to change them to BT myself? Uh, extremely, Adam. You don't want to uh, go down that path. It's, it, it, yeah, it's just not something that you want to do. It, you're going to have to solder directly to the cell and, and then the little... The, the little plastic piece is not going to want to sit right. It's, it's, it's quite the nightmare to do that. So yeah, don't, don't go down that road. Uh, you can get the same exact batteries in, uh, from tattoo or from tinywoop.com. Get them from tinywoop.com. Uh, they're the same battery. The sticker is not quite as good as the Weebleed sticker. Um, but that really doesn't matter. In worst case scenario, the sticker peels off and then your bladder, your battery is just black and you know, you're you'll be you'll be fine uh and i'm sure that we bleed has those battery the bt 2.0 versions of the batteries coming back in stock so i mean technically speaking you could just wait um jeff did uh, zotech did tell me today uh that he's got a ton of stuff coming back in stock so i'm sure that the uh the batteries are one of those items because those are a big seller for him all right we only have one motor after this one to chop the leads down hopefully these are the right length i didn't uh i didn't double check and i've just been like willy-nilly chopping the shit out of them <laughs> let's double check real quick i just cut this one down let's make sure that it's that's the right length here all right, yeah, we good to go. Yeah, so the motor's gonna sit there, race square is gonna sit there, and yeah, we got plenty of room. Cool. Uh, okay, and then we got one more here that we're gonna line up. And the way that I'm lining these up is I'm just going stator base to stator base in my fingers here, and then I use these two fingers to sandwich the wires, um, and then I just kind of line up by eye the, the stator bases and then I just get these guys and just kind of push them together a little bit and then I, I've got a little piece of VHB on the on the bottom of the one so it just kind of sticks together separate the wires out a little bit and then just come in like this and I just kind of like butt 
my uh, my cutters up against the one cut wire, and then that just yeah, it's the perfect length. So on a normal build, you would only do this once. On a normal build, you would cut one side to the right length, and then the other side you'd be able to do this with real quick. And yeah, this will save you some time. Not much, but save you a little bit of time. And there we go. That's uh, 12 motors cut down to the appropriate length. I'm not going to mount all 12 of these because I like to strip these down with my fingernails and uh, I like to strip the, the insulation off, I should say, with my fingernails. Why do I have too many over here? Because uh, I need one of these. There we go. All right, two right and two left, two right and two left. This one's got the uh, VHB on it, and then I've got a bunch of extra motor wire here. And, all right, and those are all going to go to the winners. All right. Uh, what's next here? Do me a favor, chat. Make sure I don't uh, do this for too long and forget to fly. I've got... Six batteries charged up, and uh, we are going to fly them on the 0802 30,000 kV rig that currently has the HQ prototype tri blades on it. Uh, at some point, after a couple of batteries, I'm going to take those off and I'm going to put um, bi blades back on it and see if I can tell a difference between the two. I'm always kind of trying to really. Um, figure out the actual in-flight differences between the tri and the bi-blades. Um, currently, the main thing that I feel is that the bi-blades are... Just when you're off throttle, the bi-blades kind of... Uh, they just carry farther. And I do a lot of off-throttle throw kind of moves, so for me that's kind of amazing for it to have that extra little bit of carry. Um, the other thing that I'm going to be putting on to this ESC is a little blue Tiny's LEDs, just a, a, an always-on LED that I'm going to solder directly to the, uh, the power pads. And then this guy is going to go on the bottom of this. Uh, this is my favorite little way of, of having an LED on the bottom so that if somebody's chasing me, there's something very bright for them to sort of lock onto. So we're going to be doing that here as well. So I'll leave that guy there. I just use uh, 30 gauge wires for that and they, it works totally fine. LEDs are, um, yeah, LEDs don't take much voltage. So the question is motors first or XT60 first? And I think the answer is XT60 first. Uh, so we need to cut this down. This guy is way, way, way too long. So let me actually grab one of my existing rigs. And well, no, I, I think I have an XT60 that I removed from a quad that I can use. Yeah, I do. I do, I do, I do. Uh, but this guy has the one lead longer than the other. Is this one that I'd removed as well? I think so. And this one has the red lead shorter. So that's pretty cool. Let me just hold this up to one of my other rigs and make sure uh, that it's long enough. I have a very specific length that I like for these uh, race wire LEDs to be. I'm sorry, uh, XT60s to be. So that um, this is actually kind of a big deal. Like you, your, your, your battery cable management is a really big deal. If you get it just right, do it this way so that you guys can see it better. If you get it just right, you can have your battery lead soldered sideways to the ESC. It comes directly out the side, and then it turns up, and it goes forward. And if you, if you cut the wires the exact right length, um, it'll want to do this on its own. It'll want to turn this corner on its own. And then what you want is you get to tuck it in to the battery strap here so that when the battery strap is pulling tight, it's basically holding the XT60 together. And the reason that I do it like this is that you can mount your battery. You don't want to mount your battery with the, with the power leads or the balance leads out the rear of the quad because then every single time you crash like this, you're going to mangle either your balance leads 
or your battery leads, and that can actually lead to the battery catching on fire or just, you know, you not having the battery connected after a crash, which is really bad. You want to always mount your batteries like this so that you can protect the, uh, the battery and the balance leads. So you end up running it like that. This is a really weird battery, so just don't mind this battery. But it's, in my opinion, really, really, really important to have your battery leads up here behind your GoPro uh, to protect them. And then what you can do is put the, the, um, the main voltage lead on the opposite side, and then it loops over. You could technically have it on this side and then just make like a really sharp angle here, but that's, that seems awful harsh to have this super sharp angle. If you do it like this, it's a, it's a much nicer little, um, yeah, angle that the, that this wire is going to be able to run. And then it's going to tuck itself right under that first battery strap there connected to, to this, uh, yeah, to the ESC lead. And it's just a nice little compact setup that won't come unplugged and it's protected and you're not breaking XT60s, you're not breaking balance leads, you're not, um, yeah, it, it's, it is hands down the most durable setup that I've ever found. Also, it keeps your uh, very thick XT60 wire run extremely short. Like you, the, these are very heavy, the, these wires here. So the shorter you can keep these, the better. I see people that'll like run this all the way down the length of the rear end of the quad and then all the way back up over to the front. It's like, yeah, that's like 20 extra grams of wire that you got in there, don't do that. Um, the whole point of me getting this down was to look at the, at the length of the wire and I forgot to do that because I was more interested in explaining to you guys what the hell the situation was. So yeah, this guy is actually a little bit too long. Like, so it's basically soldered up there and then it comes out and if, if this was the one Actually, no, it's not. What you want to remember is this thing has to go upwards. There's some, there's some upwards length to this little guy. Uh, so, yeah. If I fish that in, basically, and line it up with where that is. Nah, this one, I guess, is a little bit longer. Um, and, like, normally it would be like, yeah, it's it's fine for it to be longer. Uh, it it kind of isn't because you want it to be able to sit back and you're, you're also starting to get this prop tip somewhat close. So if you've got too much wire on here, it is going to be a little bit of a pain in the ass. Um, so, yeah, but... I, so I, I have this wire length perfectly kind of figured out for the Tattoo R-Line 6S 1080 batteries that I run. Um, these auction rigs might be sold to someone running a different battery that has a longer or shorter lead on it. So I guess I should uh, cut these guys ever so slightly longer so that if somebody's using a wacky battery, they'll still be okay. So... Just don't crash, and this isn't a problem. That's it. Punani knows. Just don't, just don't crash. That's it. I forgot about that. That's that's the that's always the answer. Just don't crash. Just don't fly. Just hang them up on the wall, and just leave them on the wall, and and that's how FPV should really be done. Uh, let me take a look at the ESC to make sure the positive side is going to be the short side. Yep, the the ground is here. The positive is here. Uh, I also make sure that the lead is coming out on this side of the quad because for whatever reason, I hold the quad like this. I hold the, the GoPro in my left hand, and then this is the side that the battery straps are on, so I always make sure that everything is on this one side so that I'm not, like, reaching over it all stupid-like. Uh, so, I'm actually going to end up cutting this thing the exact same length as... Um, as this other one that I've got here. So I guess I can just put both of these XT60s down. Uh, these leads on here are 12 gauge. That is massively over... Nah, it's not massively overkill. Apparently 14 gauge is really the right um, the right one, but these are um, XT60s that I bought pre-made. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a slightly higher gauge. It, you know, having... 
you you would you always want thicker than thinner um, because wires that are too thin can uh, add resistance and heat and that can be a bad thing so better to have these be slightly overkill than slightly underkill so let's chop this guy here and then doing the same kind of trick just resting the tip of the cutters onto the already cut wire and then that lines it up perfectly for you so there we go with these all right uh i don't need this anymore because this well let's just let's just make absolutely sure that it's good to go Well, it actually got cut a little bit short, but that's that's fine. I kind of wanted to do that. Uh, it only got cut about a millimeter short. This is me being pedantic and insane. All right, so we got three more. Let me make sure that all of these ESCs have the positive pad towards me, and they sure do. All right, so here we go. And... that okay you guys are continually being hit in the face with wires on today's live stream it's a service that I provide okay rest it on that one bring it in here oh man I was hoping that would hit you guys in the face but I didn't cut all the way through the silicone Okay, one more, no, no, two more chances to hit you folks in the face. Okay. We've got the ground lead. Hey! And then voltage. Voltage with a W. Get in there. There it is. I want to make sure I get it centered so I can shoot you guys in the face. Oh, missed. Well, there we have it. Our XT60 leads are now all cut down to the right length. Uh, now the name of the game is... Man, the, these are so thick that I'm actually going to use... Usually I just like to dig my fingernails in. Uh, because your fingernails will only ever uh, push through the silicone. They'll never, ever dent the, um, the inner strands of wire. But these 12 gauges are thick enough that I'm actually going to use the, uh, the cutters here just to kind of start leaving a dent in the silicone. I'm not going to cut all the way through the silicone with them. I'm just going to kind of dent it, and then I'll use my fingernails to sort of finish it off. So... And the, the amount of silicone that you cut off is basically just the thickness of the pad that you're going to be soldering it to. So just kind of look at the thickness of the pad and then uh, take off pretty much that same amount of the silicone. And so we dented it. Now we're going to come in here and just rip it off. And the one thing that you can check when, when, you, rip the, uh, when you rip the silicone off is just look inside the silicone and make sure there's not a whole bunch of strands of wire. It's, if there are, it's kind of too late because you've probably cut it as short as you can. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if there's just like one or two strands, you're probably okay, unless it's a 30 gauge wire. A big thick gauge of wire like this, there's probably a hundred individual little strands. So if you nick and cut like two or three of those, it's no big deal. On 30 gauge wire though, sometimes there's only eight individual strands of wire in there. So if you cut one or two of those by, uh, by accident, that's kind of a big deal. Um, so you probably want to start over at that point, especially like if it's a 30 gauge wire driving a big bright LED or something like that. Um, but yeah, these big thick wires... If, if you've only got like one or two little strands that you've accidentally cut, it's kind of no big deal. Because they're, I mean, it depends. Some of these will have much thicker strands of wire and much fewer 
that's kind of, you know, that's up to you to sort of figure out. Uh, so, soldering iron is coming on. We're going to do some tinning here. I'm going to tin this guy up, and I'm also going to take a look at this. While it's coming up to temperature, I'm going to spec out this capacitor and figure out how long I want these little leads to be. So the capacitor is gonna sit roughly here. And so I'm gonna hold it in place. It's gonna be zip tied down and then it's little uh, wires hooked up to the, um, the waffle cap are gonna run up here and link up with the, uh, with the ESC pads. So that looks pretty good there. And I'm not pulling it straight. I'm just I'm pushing on the wire a little bit to give it a little bit of extra kind of love just to make sure that you know none of the wire runs are super short but by giving yourself a little bit of extra cable on all these wire runs it's just going to help you out down the road when not if but when uh, you need to do some repairs because yeah we're talking about freestyle here and, and we're going to be crashing these things um, so think about your future self and uh, yeah make sure you got enough wire extra wire on everything for a little bit of repair work down the road and you'll be a lot happier of a human being. So just kind of holding it up where it's going to be and then just leaving a notch in that wire and then so there's the positive and now here comes the ground and same kind of deal just sort of hold it up there and then come in with your cutters and there we go, and here we go. Cool. So now we got a capacitor that is cut down to the proper length. Turn on my little fan here to blow the solder fumes away so that I don't die. If you're only building a couple rigs, you'll never know it. I mean, if, if I were to start doing this full time, eight hours a day, I would always have a fan on because we use leaded solder and the fumes are not great for you. That's why when you get rigs, they tend to have uh, lead-free solder on them because the folks in the factory that are soldering all day every day, you know, we don't want them to die. Who would uh, who would build our our binding flies then? You know what I mean? Know what I'm saying? All right, so we can get this out of here, and I have this little block of wood that's really nice. It gives you a little bit of elevation. Um, Sit those up, and then this is the one that I cut down, so I just need to strip off. And now these are smaller gauge wires, so I don't really have to come in with the uh, with the clippers. I can just come in with my fingernails, drive my fingernails in here, and pull the silicone off. Like that. Take them in there, wiggle it around a little bit, and then just yank it off. Yank your wires off, my friends. You can thank me later. And then when I'm uh, when I'm uh, tinning stuff, you just want to make sure that the uh, you can do the little twisty thing, but usually you don't need to as as long as it's as long as you've just removed the uh, the silicone. And just make sure that the wires aren't flattened out. You want the the bundle of wires there to be as round as possible. Um, one of the things that you can do to make your life so much easier is to flux these wires. Just get your little flux pen or your syringe and drop some flux on the, uh, on the exposed bit of wires here. That's going to make your life so, so, so much easier. There and there. There is flux in the solder itself, but with flux, you typically can't have too much. Technically, you can, as we found out with the Tiny Whoop motor debacle, but that's, uh, that was a pretty specific kind of scenario there. Um, Punani says, how do you stream your goggle view on stream? i been trying to figure out how to stream my flights live to my friends in Discord using OBS. Um, there's a little... Uh, 
uh, a box, a little USB box that you can get from Amazon for like 20 bucks. I think if you search Amazon for R-O-T-G, uh, R like Randy, O like Orange, T like Thomas, G like George, um, there's a diversity version of it and there's a non-diversity version of it. Um, yeah, and it, it hooks up via USB and it just pops up in software as a video source. All right, so when you're uh, when you are actually, I'm gonna give you guys the detail cam for this. When you're tinning wires, you want to understand that you are trying to push solder in between all of the strands of wire. So what you want to do is bring your heat source in from below and push your solder in from above. This is fine. I'm going to leave this like this. So that's what you're going to see me doing here is I'm going to bring the tip of the soldering iron in from below and then I'm going to bring the solder in from up above. You can also do like left and right, but just understand that you're trying to push and feed this solder in between all of these strands of wire. So this is gonna, this first one is gonna be more like left to right. Get the flat pot spot of your soldering iron against the wire. It does help to tin it, tin the tip like that a little bit. That'll help with the heat transfer. And now, Just give it some time. These big thick wires do take a little bit of time here. And now you can see the wire is hot enough. So now we're going to push this solder in. And you want the whole end of this thing to be nice and smooth and shiny. And that's it. And now we're going to come over to this one. And now I'm going to go on the bottom with this one. The tip of my iron already has a bunch of solder on it. See how it's moving away? If I get it properly on the bottom, it won't move away. So if I get it correctly on the bottom here, we'll just be lifting it up. And there we go. My soldering iron is set to 700 degrees. That's not a super high value. It's also not a super low value. It's kind of somewhere in between. Uh, these smaller wires are gonna go a whole hell of a lot faster. Let me just pull out a little bit more solder on my little loopy guy here. So again, heat source on the bottom. And the first thing I do is I, I feed some solder in between the iron and the wire because the wire does take a second to heat up and then that's it. Soldering iron on the bottom, add solder in between the tip and the actual exposed bits of wire and that'll get the heat transferred to the wire and then you start pushing it in um, below the wire. Let me let me explain that a little bit better for you guys. Um, so you've got your you've got your wire sitting here, and then you've got your tip of the soldering iron. Tip of the soldering iron is going to go on the bottom of the wire, right here where my thumb is. There's a joint. There's there's just like a section that's here. I'll do it like this. Right here is where you want to first add some solder. The wire is not going to heat up immediately. You're going to touch the tip and it's going to start to heat up. If you add a little bit of solder here, you're actually adding solder to the tip of the, the soldering iron. It'll immediately melt. And since you're adding it right next to the wire, it'll start to help with that heat transfer into the wire. So then, so you're going to add your solder here first to the between them. And then that'll immediately get the wire to heat up. And then so you can kind of add solder in between and then transfer to adding solder to the wire itself to push that solder in between all those strands of wire. Make sense? Technically speaking, you could just wait. You could just take the wire, take the tip, push it up against it and just wait like three or four seconds, but I'm impatient. So I put this tip of the soldering iron there. I add solder in between the two and then that'll start to flow and then you can start pushing it through the strands of wire. Um, what's next? Mm, let me do this. Let me, let me show you that. Let me show you guys that a couple more times. Would that be helpful? Uh, now that I've explained it, you can actually see what the hell I'm doing. Almac says, uh, what ESCs are those? They look like the something, 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 Tyro 119. Um, quite the opposite, Almac. These are... Uh, these are really the best ESCs that have kind of that I've ever found. 
Uh, these are Akon AK32 ESCs. Unfortunately, these were discontinued a few years ago. Um, and yeah, they're about as indestructible as it comes. Akon makes the best electronics, it seems. Um, and yeah, I stockpiled a bunch of these. Uh, I don't really fly much freestyle anymore, so I'm letting a few of them go on these rigs. I, it's, yeah, I'd, I'd rather have the money than just hoarding all these AK-32s. I, I think I have one extra of these for myself, um, but yeah. Akon AK-32, they're actually only 35 amp ESCs, but they are properly made ESCs that we don't need, we actually don't really need more than 25 amps. 25 amp ESCs are completely fine. Um, Ryan Harrell, uh, who runs Mini Quad Test Bench, uh, and is pretty much the authority on ESCs and motors, uh, he's been running 25 amp ESCs forever, uh, and he's never popped one. An ESC being good quality is much more important than it having a really high amp rating. High amp rating sells... Uh, good quality survives is, is an easy way to think about it. Um, one of the things that I did just notice is that I did not get full um, transfer of the, and, and like, uh, yeah, the, the solder didn't go all the way through here. I actually think it, it did. I think it coated the wires enough. Yeah, it did coat the wires. So there are no individual strands trying to escape, but... I would rather get a little bit more heat transfer here. Um, this isn't a PCB, so there's like reworking this. There's no problem with that. Um, so let's come in and, and hit this again, and, and I can kind of show you what I was talking about with the uh, with just sort of the sequence of events that happens for me to get this done as efficiently and quickly as possible. Uh, Free Ledger says, Discord image for the flux paste fan good. What the hell is a flux paste? Oh, fume extractor. Very cool. Yeah, they, they sell specific uh, extractors, but, I mean, with with how little soldering any one of us are actually going to be doing, um, just any kind of moving air is, you really don't need it, to be totally honest. But uh, it's it's not a terrible idea. So, here we go again. We are going to tin the tip and then hold it up against the wire here. Add the, the solder to the area between them and then start pushing it in between the strands of wire. And now we've got full, full penetration, friends. One more time here. Add solder there. Then add solder up here. And it'll take a second, but now you can see. Now I can start pushing it in between the strands. And now the entire, entire, entire wire. You don't want to add too much. Um, too much solder is not a great thing. It's not the end of the world, but it's not a great thing to have too much solder. Um, you want sort of just the right amount. You want enough to coat all of the wires so that the whole thing is kind of shiny. Uh, but you don't want this massive ball of solder on the end of this. That's that's not a great thing. Uh, on these big, thick wires, sometimes you'll have to hit them twice like I just did. Sometimes it's, um, it's a little bit challenging to get everything, all of the wires, completely um, covered and, and tinned. The process of tinning your wires um, allows you to now just be able to and and i've also tinned these pads so now all i have to do is hold this wire up to the pad and then bring the tip of the soldering iron in there's enough extra solder on the pad and on the wire that they're going to join together this way i don't have to have this secured and then one hand and then secure this on like an easy hands thing and then i don't have to add the tip of the soldering iron and solder at the same time you don't want to have to do that. It's it's much better to tin the wire, get a little bit of extra solder there, tin the pad, get a little bit of extra solder there, and then you can per you can use one of your hands to hold this in exactly the right position, and then with your other hand you bring the heat in, and you're not yeah that's just that's just the right way to do it. <laughs> 
Oh god. First S Weasel is writing a strongly worded letter to <laughs> never mind. We'll leave it there. Uh, so yeah, for this one we're now kind of done with this guy. Uh, I'm gonna solder these guys up to the ESC. And like I said, I want these going out the side. Uh, so I'm gonna do these guys sideways like this, and I'm gonna do the positive one first, and then I'm gonna come on top and do the negative. So now is your last chance to kind of check that you've cut these at the right length. Also, you wanna check for interference in your frame to see what this lead could be potentially running into. Um, so when we put this up here, hold on. When I put this up here like that, you can kind of see where this lead is going to be exiting out. So on these guys, I always put a little bit of an angle on it because we've got this to worry about, right? Like we don't, there's there's kind of no reason to do this. I don't want to I don't want to go behind that. I like to go right in front of it. Um, so the red one's going to be kind of like that. And then the black one's going to come up above that. And then this lead is going to go up and kind of turn the corner. And yeah, all will be right with the world in but a moment. Uh, so yeah, you just want to kind of check your angle that you're going to have. So we're going to do roughly a 45 with this guy. Put this here. You can... You can put it on the double-sided tape. You do you. You could also, at this point, put the ESC on top of your little um, thermal putty, which I do recommend. That's a perfectly good little way of holding it. We'll do that. Since we've been using the block, we'll, uh, we'll move over to the thermal paste. Um, pay attention to the to the rotation of this. You don't want to you don't want to solder this red one on like this because then the black one is going to is is you're going to have to like rotate the wire with these short wire runs they don't want to they don't want to twist right so when you solder this guy on solder it on the way that um the way that the uh yeah the way that the wires are going to sit so i'm going to solder this on like this cuz this is how these wires are going to sit i would not want to solder it on like that because then this thing is tacked down and i'm going to have to twist it and that's going to give it this weird bend um, so yeah, we're going to put it like that. Uh, this is, I, I'm, I'm not really going to be able to show you this on this small camera because I need, um, I need to be able to like get my hands in here and, and just do this work. So, uh, I'm going to separate these guys so that I have enough room to sort of work here. This guy is going to be on an angle like that, and then I'm going to come in with the soldering iron tip like this. And now we're going to have to be patient with this because of the fact that um, these are big, thick wires. They're going to absorb a lot of heat, and also because of the fact that we're soldering to this big old uh, ESC, this is going to want to absorb a bunch of the heat as well. Um, so we got to have a little bit of patience. Technically, you could crank up the, the temperature on the soldering iron to like 800 Fahrenheit or something to do this. Um, but, yeah, I prefer to leave it at 700 and just have a little bit of patience. So, here we go with this little guy. I just want to make sure this thing is secure here. So, all right, it's going to come down like that. And we do want to get a little bit of flux on here. I'm going to put some on these pads and also on the wires themselves just to get the heat transfer going as quickly as possible all right again there is flux inside of the solder but we've already burned that off right we're not going to be adding solder here so it is nice to add a little bit of flux and nice clean soldering iron tip we got the right angle on this guy. And because I added flux, there's going to be an immediate explosion of smoke. And that's just going to get that heat transfer started. And now we can see the wire has now melted, but the pad has not melted. So this is where the patience comes in. You need to just really get your eyes in a spot where you can see the pad, because you need for the pad to melt as well. The solder on the pad. Otherwise, you can have a cold solder joint, and you do not want that. So patient, patient, patient. 
the heat is transferring. And there goes the pad. The pad is now melted. And this is when the, the wire will really flatten out. And now you can get the wire where you want it and accidentally slip and have it not go in the right spot. Hold it nice and steady. And now that's pretty good, but I, I, I think I actually want to add a little bit more solder here. So with these big wires, I don't like this uh, I don't like this putty quite as much. I love the putty with um, with the smaller wires, but the, with these big thick wires, I actually prefer the wood block here. And so first pass here, we do have a good joint, but a bunch of the solder actually moved down. It's just, I need to add a little bit of solder here. So I'm gonna put my little spoolie boy of solder right here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rework this real quick. I'm gonna pick up a bunch of the solder on the tip of the iron and then I'm gonna put it back on there because I just wanna add a little bit of solder. It, it's, uh, technically I don't need to add any, but um, it just kinda of looks better when you have a little bit of extra and I would always rather have a little bit of extra than not quite enough, so. We'll put a little bit more flux back on this wire here. Now that the wire is hot, it's not gonna to wanna, to, like the flux might just kinda of liquefy as you're adding it. That's okay, you're, it's still on there. So let's rework this guy real quick like and now this time the wire has started to get hot so I'm going to use no well, no I'll be alright I'll be alright holding the wire clean the tip of the iron if you're logistics, do you have a link for the putty I don't but it's just at uh, their website which is um, massadhesive.com m-a-s-s adhesive dot com There you go. Thermally resistive putty. It's really good stuff. It's not for everything, uh, but it is for a lot of things. All right, tip of the soldering iron is clean. Flux is on there. Let's just rework this real quick, just to make it look a little bit better. Pick up a bunch of solder on the tip of the iron here, and then just come back in. And we're gonna do the exact same thing that we did the ESC is already kind of warm, the wire is already kind of warm, so it's going to go quicker this time, and there it goes. I can see it melting down to the pad. And there we go, that looks much better. Cool, so now we've got, before what we had going on is, um, if like the wire is here and the pad is here, in between the wire and the pad, we had a really sharp um, concave, I think. I think this is concave. We had a really sharp concave thing kind of going on. Well, we, we do want that. We don't want it to be bubbled out like this. We, we want this concave, but we don't want like, we don't want a concave like this. We want it like that. And that is, that is now what we've got. Let me show you that. Um, so now we've got a really nice, smooth concave between the pad. Ooh, that's hard to show you. But, yeah. Um, how can I show you that concavity? Hold it up a little bit. See it? See it there? See that nice, smooth... There you go. There you go. That nice smooth angle between the uh, the wire and the pad. Cool. Uh, and now you also want to check any little components that are near this pad uh, to make sure that your, your wire is not getting too close to it. And you always want to use magnification to do that. So let's just take a quick look. We do have a little capacitor there, but... Yeah, there's plenty of room. There's like a full two millimeters of room there. And you're also just gonna sort of check your work now. And yeah, we've got plenty of a gap between the positive pad and the ground pad. 
So yeah, that's looking really nice. And now we're going to bring in the ground pad. And the ground pad has a little bit extra in it. Like if I just run the ground pad directly onto it, um, it's, it's a little bit too long. But when I'm holding it with my fingers, I'm just going to hold it back a little bit. And by having a little bit extra on the ground, that's going to kind of like almost encourage this thing to make that, that angle there. Um, and and kind of it's also going upwards. We want it to go upwards because it's it's going up above the top plate into that battery strap. Um, so yeah, that kind of helps with that. It helps it just want to turn right. Like if it's if it's running if it's just a straight line here, it's the battery plug is going to want to sit out like that. As soon as I like kind of preload this, see what it does? See how it, it kind of encourages this thing to turn forwards a little bit? And that's what we want. We want it to be under as little stress when it's up uh, connected to the battery as possible. And then we're going to test fit it once we're done to make absolutely sure that it's perfect. So now when you're doing it at a 45, you also want to make sure that the, um, that the silicone on the one wire is protecting it from the other wire. So this is going to sit perfectly on here um, we don't have like two big pieces of exposed wire like sitting right next to each other like that. We've got the 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 black silicone is going to butt perfectly up against the big thick joint that we just made on the positive lead here. Um, the other thing that's going to go on though is that we're going to add some some other wires and some other shit, right? We've got this um, we've got this little uh, race wire LED and then we've also got the capacitor. So I'm actually going to hold off on this. I just noticed it's 447. So we're, we're going to fly some tiny whoop. Um, I'm going to finish this up maybe tonight or tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I'm going to hold off and I'm going to solder a couple more things uh, to this. Two more things, the, uh, the LED and the capacitor. I'm going to solder these up to this red lead. I just basically put them right on top of it right there. Uh, and then I'll bring the black wire in. It's no big deal. If, if, if I were to solder the black wire up, um, there is still space. It just makes it a little bit easier to kind of do this now. And, and, you know, this build is all kind of being done at once. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to do that. But let's fly a little bit of Tiny Whoop. We've talked about building an awful lot on this stream. And I know I've done that for eons and eons and eons on this channel. So there's nothing but... Uh, info on how to solder, how to build, the million little tricks and whatnot. EVFPV says, uh, shake my head using Fahrenheit for your solder temps. <laughs> yeah. I should measure it in, uh, I should be a real American and measure solder temperatures in, uh, if I were a real American, I would measure solder temperatures in units of, uh, uh, how many minutes you put a cheeseburger or a hot dog in the grill. My solder iron temperature is set to four minutes and 32 seconds on a barbecue grill with some hamburgers and hot dogs with the lid closed. America. There's a, one of my favorite memes going around is, uh, is people taking news stories where they're like, truck that's as long as five barrels falls off the freeway and then the 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 meme is like in america we'll use anything other than the metric system uh and I, it's just it's just absolutely hysterical uh some of the news stories that will comp use just the most absurd units of measurement ever uh the best jokes are always the ones that you have to explain <laughs> I just got splashed. Punani says, oh, do we got that? Uh, when you got that, we 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 got that. Veritas uses, and then we got that. Freelodra says, do you have a link for the putty? We talked about that. CMYK says, 1102, 10,000 KV sold out, but 19,000 KV is available. Motor limited for the tiny lifter. Technically, yes, CMYK, but it's a pretty big motor limit. Um... Let me, let me ask Kelvin when the... 10,000s will be back in stock. 
uh, because if you can get the, t the like, yeah, the ten thousands are just kind of perfect. You can run them at a hundred percent, and there's no weirdness. Um, any idea when the eleven oh two ten thousand EV motors will be back in stock? Uh, Want to build tiny lifters like mine. All right, cool. I'll let you know. Uh, if if for some reason you wanted to run it on Byblades, yes, you would want to get the higher KV motors. Although the ten thousands actually work fine on on the Byblades, so yeah, I would I would wait for the ten thousand ten thousands. And to be honest, I like it. I think I like the tiny lifters better on on tri or quad blades. It's certainly a lot quieter. J Drones is in the house, and I'm caught up on chat. Freedom units, yeah, that's it. Freedom units. That's the American measuring system. Fuck standard measurements. I'm not doing nine sixteenths, fucking seven hundred four thousandths. I'm going to measure shit in either cheeseburgers or hot dogs. How many hot dogs long is it? So we're going to fly this uh, little Ultimate Freestyle Tiny Whoop on the gem, uh, sorry, the HQ prototypes first for a couple of batteries. And then I'm going to swap over to um, the Byblades. We'll see how that be. Did not hold the button for long enough. There we go. Welcome. Okay, flat away. And actually, no, one of these batteries is super poofy. Let's fly that one first. Yeah, here's the poofy battery. Oh, I can hear it leaking. Yeah. <laughs> this battery's not happy. It's a little leaky. Yo, I will say this. Um, so I've had Tattoo, TinyWhoop.com, and Weebleed FPV, 300mAh folded cell BT 2.0 batteries running for a long time now. Um, I'm pretty sure that they're all made in the same place, but for whatever reason, uh, the Weebleeds have held up the best, for sure. Um, not a huge sample size. I, I've only had like probably, well, I've had six of each, six, six, and six. Um, and yeah, that's been the, the results. The, the Weebleeds have held up much better uh, than the Tiny Whoops. The Weebleeds have a sticker that's more durable. So uh, yeah, those are the ones that I recommend buying all the time. But they have uh, definitely failed less often, which is kind of cool. Here we go! Oh, oh, oh. It was all going so well. So this is the rig on the 802 motors, which is a little heavier than what I'm used to but it's also got a little bit more power. There's that power. Let's flail it around the room a little bit. Even though this battery is all poofy, it's still working all right. Can I get out of there? Oh boy, oh boy. Wait, I made it through. All right, let me get my bearings a little bit here. I'm flying like a donkey. Yeah. Oh! Crash recovery screwed me on that one for the record. Here we go! Just dropping it down, dropping it down low. Let's get low. Let's get low! Oh! I'm gonna blame that on the extra weight. It was a little too heavy, so it slid out into the wall. Definitely not piloting air. 
It's never piloting error. There's always an excuse. Just avoiding that fan. Battery is at 3.4. Let's bring it home-ish. Oh, you jackass, you. Battery's holding up okay at 3.4. When the, when the batteries start to poof up, they start to act really weird. Like, they'll show you a lower voltage, then... They'll just basically sag more. That was pretty clean. I have not... I have not done the lengthwise power loop of the coffee table super clean yet. That was, I think, the cleanest I've done it. Nope. Can't have that little delay in there. That's cheating. All right, let's get this poofy battery out of here. Yeah, the, the runtime's definitely a little bit lower, 224. Although, no, th this is the 0802 rig, so what's it bouncing back to? 3.6? Right here. This is like the regular battery measurement, so you'll see it 3.65, 3.66 at some point here. Maybe not. Yeah, bouncing back to 3.65. That's that's dead. Two minutes and 24 and it's dead. Yeah, it's a little bit short. Let's Let's do a battery that's not super poofy with a hole in it. And, uh, and we'll see what's what. See if we can get a little bit more on time. Uh, this is a perfectly flat battery. This one's in good shape. With Tiny Whoop batteries, you can really tell their health by um, how poofy they are. Frilojo with a $5 super chat. He says, for the MMCF, because we don't want man burned on live stream on the news. MMCF. What's that? The Medicine Man Cometh Fund? Yeah, it is. Thank you, dude. Get that added in here in a second. Come on. Pulling a hair out of the motor at the moment. Hang on. Get out of there, hair. Come on. Well, good enough. Oh, man. Yeah, it's good I'm switching these props. There's a whole bunch of hair in these motors. Uh, thank you, dude. Somebody else, uh, hey, Kevin James joined the Patreon as well. Adam T. and Kevin James both joined the Patreon. Those are two people that are now officially in the gangly gang. Thank you, fellas. Very cool of you. Oh, and a bunch of people bought some shit from Weebly. Wow, three of you guys bought stuff from Weebly. Look at you go. You guys get those propellers? Who got those propellers? Why do I always think the, the one side of my goggles are the ones that are low? Uh, where'd that battery go? What's happening here? Here it is. Okay, this is a, a full stinky, stinky post battery. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine, man. I don't know. I just say stuff. Sometimes it makes sense. Sometimes it doesn't. To some people, it makes more sense than others. Here we go! Oh! Oh. Oh God, why? Nope. Oh no. No, no, no. What was that? What it just fell off? Did you guys see that? Something fell off. What's that? What are you? A little piece of fuzz? Is that the shrink wrap from the battery lead? What are you? Ah! It's blowing away like it's a piece of fuzz. Like it's a piece of fuzz. Let's suck it into the motors. That's what we'll do. What is that? Oh, I went through that gate backwards. <laughs> Pretty sure it's a piece of fuzz. Oh boy, that gate got me. Oh. Look at that aerial view of the coffee table just hanging that motherfucker up there. Hanging it. Oh. There's nothing that I like better than just coming nice and low and then just a big blast and then just let it hang. Ready? Just let's just let's just experiment. Oh! 
There, man, like fl- that. That is everything for me. Just that fucking hang time with a tiny whoop, because like, oh yes. I'm gonna change my fucking FPV name to Hang Time FPV. Tiny Whoop Hang Time FPV in the house. Oh, rejected! Oh shit! Oh! <laughs> Who said? Oh god! Who said 802 rigs are too heavy? Wait, that was me. Oh, the big old backflip! Oh! So close. Not high enough. Bring that shit! Bring it and I'll just annihilate its face! Oh, <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> now we can get out of here. We can, we, ah, nah, nah, nah. Let me out. Let me go. Let's do some proximity shit. Let's do this. I've, I've, I've never done this orbit to the right. I've only ever done it to the left! Oh, no. No, no, no. Get out of there. No. Don't. Yes. Oh, you jerk. All right, this is the entertainment center orbit. Let's try to do it the weak way. Right side is always more difficult than left. Oh, fuck. Wow, it's way harder to the right. It's way harder to the right. Way harder to the right. Way harder to the right. Oh my god. Go low. Go low. The, the low hole. Oh man. That's tough. Let's do it to the left. Just to even things up for us. Oh shit. No, oh, no, 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 no. Come on now. Be cool. Uh, the battery's dead. That's why I can't do it. Uh, three minutes and 23. Yeah, see? But we spent a whole bunch of time just doing, like, light orbity stuff. But, yeah, that, that other battery's probably shot to shit. Uh, Jason Black says, What long and patch antenna do you use on your goggles? Um, I use a, a TrueRC long uh, singularity. And then the patch, since it's purple, I swear to God that's the main reason, is a Menace RC patch. Um, most patches are made kind of equal so buy the patch that's in the color that you like best um and you'll be good to go all right yo let's do another one on these hq triblades and then maybe maybe then we'll switch to the uh to the buys the gem pen buys ah You guys ever know you can do launch mode backwards? <laughs> Just drive yourself into the ground. Okay, hold on. Let me try. Let me try backwards launch mode. What could we do with? What can we do with backwards launch mode? Hold on. Let me line myself up for this gate. Maybe I can hit this gate backwards. All right, let's try this. Hold on. Lined up. All right, here we go. Oh, no, I didn't go high enough. Let's try it one more time. Okay. I think I got turned to the left a little bit. All right, here we go. Backwards launch mode. Oh, I hit the gate. I was close. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, that was the TV. The TV got me. It's why I like that little move. Ooh! Got it. Everything's okay. <laughs> Jesus. That was a little off-kilter mood, mix, move, mixing uh, pitch and roll. Look at this giraffe. Look at the giraffe in his natural habitat, hanging out in the leaves. 
Look at him. Hi, I'm Jeffrey. This giraffe is taller than I am. Maggie got this for me for a uh, moving in present. I've always wanted that big tall giraffe and I could it was a hundred bucks so I never justify buying it. Ha! Woo! I didn't see that coming. Ah! No, no, no. There we go. We're fine. Everything's cool. Ugh! A little bit of prop wash on that. Did you guys see that? Let's see if this... Let's see if this will take any more... Um... Fid loop. Also, let's see if I can land on the railing. Can I do it? Can I do it? Oh, so close! It paused for that, like, split second there. Uh, simplified tuning, and... Let's just pump up the D-gain. D-gain is the main thing that takes care of prop wash. ELRS, what are you doing? Oh, oh! Diagonal? Oh, the diagonal room power loop! Come on, you know you want to eat it. What's that mean? fucker back downstairs. Oh, I tried to cut that corner a little too close and we're falling down the stairs. Hey! It fell around the corner. That's rare. Get up in there. Get up in there. Oh, boy. over just charge this battery a little bit. Oh, it's only bouncing back at the 3.4. Oh, sad, sad days. Sorry, little battery. I'll put you back on the charger real quick. Uh, Athic says heads is flying 40, the 45 millimeter props inside. Wow, that's nuts. That is nutty. Uh, I wonder if that frame is, I wonder what the deal is with that frame. Is it durable? Is it donkey -rific? Uh, all right, we're going to switch these propellers over to uh, Gemfan Biblades, and I'm going to see if I can immediately tell a difference or if it's kind of subtle. I should probably fly another few batteries, but I'm just too curious. Too curious. And to be honest, I'm pretty sure that I, I've just... I've done this three blade versus bi blade thing so many times that uh, it, when I go over to bi blades, it's just I don't know, it just works better for my brain. A little looser, a little more, uh, little just a little less grippy. Like I, I don't, you know, I'm not like cranking turns. I'm trying to uh, just let it soar through the sky when it's off throttle and uh, go floating through gates. CMYK said that, says that logo looks so good in the kick drum. I know, right? <laughs> uh, uh, Squints, FPV, Adam is a local guy and he works for a, uh, a sticker printing shop and um, he made me that big old white CID FPV logo in a sticker a long time ago. And I didn't have like a great spot for it. I was thinking about putting it on the back of the car, but then I was like, eh, I don't know. That's it's a bit much having like your own logo, big as shit, on your back window. It's also like a big a big sticker on your back window is also a, a great incentive for cops to pull you over. Um, and then uh, yeah, when when I got my drum set set up, the uh, the Yamaha uh, logo that was normally there uh, was all flaking off. And I just, I just remembered that I had that sticker. I was like, oh, shit. And I dug it out. I'm like, oh, I'm sure it'll be too big or too small or something. I dug it out, and I held it up to it. I'm like, or it'll be perfect. Uh, Athix says, has, has the uh, 1002 23,500 flywheel motors in the 45. Nice. Yeah, those flywheel motors are great. I've been pretty impressed by them. They're kind of heavy, though. Um, but he's a good enough pilot to be able to fly around that. Okay, gem fan byblades going on. These are from tinywoop.com, uh, and they are dyed black. They are completely black um, gem fan byblades. Uh, gem fan only makes these in 
a neutral gray color, which is the right color to make a prop. Um, but then, yeah, Jesse is, uh, he does all kinds of dyeing, which is really cool. Really, really cool. It's very easy to do, too. You just get Rit dye from the supermarket, and you get a, a pot for your stove that you don't love because it's you're going to put a bunch of dye in it. Um, and then you boil water. You put the dye into the boiling water, and then you put your plastic thing in there. Um, and it just, the boiling dye just seeps into the plastic, and yeah, you're good to go. A lot of times the pot will pick up that color, though, so it's best to use a pot that you're not in love with to do it. But yeah, I've dyed a bunch of stuff in my life. My, my, the, my favorite thing I've ever dyed is actually the set of uh, skateboard wheels on the skateboard in the hallway. I'll show you guys that. They used to be like a light blue, uh, and I dyed them to be a darker blue. It worked incredibly well. I think that I think I have those wheels on there. I might have taken them off. Actually, I think I took them off. They're like a super grippy downhill wheel that I did that to. Um, and that's not a great board for doing downhill stuff, but they're very cool looking. Let's go take a look. Yeah, I took those blue wheels off and I put these green gumballs on. These are a better sliding wheel. Oh my god, I just, you know... Apparently thought it would move out of the out of the way. Yeah, it just feels a little bit looser. Um, I know I talk a lot of shit about not wanting these things to feel so loose, but um, there's a there's ah, the. Uh, when you're sliding, when you're flying around perfectly flat like this and you're sliding sideways like that, all of the wind resistance to slow you down is coming from the vertical face of the duct rather than the, um, rather than the number of blades that are on the propeller. It's not until you like add angle like that that the, the grip of the propeller from the number of blades it's got kind of comes into play. And for whatever reason, these by blades, when I have, when I have some angle on it, these by blades just kind of feel better. I, I don't really know what it is, but for freestyle, I really do think that these by blades are a better bet. Um, the by blade is also going to be a little bit lighter and a little bit less draggy, so that'll help your response time. So like for freestyle stuff, right, where you want your tune to be kind of cranked in. Um, yeah, it's going to work really well. They're also uh, going to be more efficient than a tri-blade. So a lot of benefits to these bi-blades. The main one... Oh my god, that was a tight one. Uh, the... Uh, yeah, the main thing that I love, though, about the bi-blades is that they're a really good match for the 0702 motors that are really high KV. Man, this battery is. This battery did not last very long. Uh, this is one of the batteries I have a red X on though, which is which means it's been around for a long time. Uh, so yeah. Uh, BWNZ says, "Why does your rapid fire have no screen?" Uh, I have a piece of uh, red electric tape over it because the screen is very bright, and I just don't necessarily. Always want to, if I'm flying a sketchy spot, I want one less bright ass light up on my head. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's just, it just makes the, the goggles a little bit more incognito. Uh, and I never use the outside screen. The rapid fire has OSD. So if I want to change channels, I do it with the goggles down on the little screen on the inside. So yeah. But yeah, it's just a little piece of, uh, it's just a little piece of red electric tape that I have over there. Your head is the highest point when you're flying, right? So if, if you got a big bright light, I also have, there's a light on this. Uh, uh, um, this is a little switch for the goggles. This is how I can, I can turn my goggles off and on with a little switch here. It's no longer made anymore, but it has a big bright light on it. And I have a big black piece of electric tape over that for the same reason. I almost did a Stevie Wonder battery here. 
All right, hopefully this bat, no. Nope. Battery voltage is 4.04, that's not a good sign. Okay, that's a really bad sign. This battery might be shot. Because I know that it was on the charger. I know it was on the charger. Uh, this is either a tiny whoop or a tattoo battery. Maybe this is another one of these batteries done. Let's hook it up to the little checker. <laughs> yeah, it says 4.15 volts. But when I actually put it on the quad and ask it for some voltage, it's having a hard time. Let's try it one more time, though. Let's give it one more shot. Nope, look at that sag. Yep. That is a battery that is going in the garbage can. Another one dies. A slow death. So I'm going to hook this up to um, the little tiny whoop discharger to bring the voltage down, and then it's going to go in the dumpster. Actually, no, I'm going to bring it to an approved place and put it in their battery recycling box. That's what I'm going to do. Last battery, and it's going to be on the uh, gem fan by blades. Let's see what's up. 0802EX, the lightweight 0802s, 30,000 kV, ultimate freestyle tiny whoop. Oh, I was really kind of hoping for the best on that one. Go visit the family. I heard Maggie's voice upstairs. Who do we got? Who's that? Who's here? Who's here? Who's here? Somebody upstairs? Nobody upstairs. Well, there's the Duke boy. Where is he going? Going upstairs? Duke is 91 years old in uh, doggy years or whatever the hell it is. Oh, almost ate that plant. Almost ate it. Can I land on top of the ball? Can he land on top of the ball? <gasps> I'm on top of the ball! <laughs> oh no! Hello, lovely! Oh no, oh no, oh no, I'm getting bounced around like a pinball. Get out of here. He puts up with so much. Good lord. The diagonal full room power loop. And subsequent dive bomb. These, these motors really pull out of that very easily. That's wild. It's just, yeah, it's just one quick blip and it pulls right out of that. That's super impressive. Ah, oh, jerk. Let's get some Matty Flips going. Oh! I love that. I love that, like, Matty Flip to Power Loop through the same thing, but it's, like, it's relatively hard. <laughs> it's playing drums! It hit three different drums! That is rare. See if I can get it. See if I can get the Matty flip to power loop. Ah! Picked up the throttle a little bit too late. Ah! A little too early on that one. Come on, let's get it. Battery's almost dead. Hurry, hurry, hurry. That was ugly as hell. That was so ugly. I just, I usually do it like when, when my recovery from the Matty flip puts me in a spot where I have some forward momentum. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to get it before this battery's done. Oh, did I throw a prop? Nope, good. Phew. Oh boy. Rejected hard. Ah, this battery's done. Ah! Crashed in my crotch. Crotch view! <laughs> Thanks for hanging, friends. That's going to do it for me. Hold on. Let me see what's in chat. 
Uh, Expander has arrived just in time for the end. Uh, I'm not gonna recharge that battery yet. Thanks for hanging, friends. It's been another fun Sunday uh, live stream. Hopefully you learned a little something from uh, kind of working on the glide. Coming back into flying outside season. So, yeah. Uh, this glide that I was cranking on tonight, as well as two more, will be available for live. I actually leave the, VT the VRX on now, Jason. I took the, uh, the plastic cover off of it so it can breathe a little bit more. And I just leave the damn thing on 24-7 now. Um, I can't get this VT 2.0 unplugged. All I have to say is I can't get this unplugged, and then I'm, I'm able to get things unplugged. So there we go. Yeah, thanks for hanging, friends. I'll see you tomorrow night at 10. It is not a giveaway stream tomorrow night, so we'll be working on some stuff, maybe some more glide content. Um... Uh, I do now have everything I need to do the, uh, um, Fractal 75 HD Zero build. Um, T-Motor sent me a replacement, uh, F4 6 amp, and they actually also sent me an F4 13 amp. I don't know what I'm going to do with this yet. Might just be a, might be a giveaway item, <clears throat> but... Yeah, we're going to try another one of these T-Motor uh, 6 amps. That's interesting. It's a 6 amp, not a 5 amp. Uh, yeah, we're going to try another one of these, and I'm going to put it in a Fractal 75 frame with HD0, and probably not fly it much, because, I don't know. Maybe it'll be cool. Uh, thanks for hanging, friends. Here comes a little bit more flying from the stables with some epidemic sound copyright free music i hope you have a wonderful day and i hope your morning at work tomorrow is not terrible but if it is i got you covered tomorrow night we'll do some streaming and hang out uh, no that's not it that's not it either nope that's not it I'm going to go with this one. Later, friends!